That's better. What is up, my fellow adventurers? Every time I post a trip video, I get tons of questions and comments from viewers. Uh, ask me where I find places to go, Crown Land Camping, Conservation Reserves, or just free parks. So I wanted to show you guys some of the tools that I use to find great places to go that are free. And that's key. One of the first resources I use is the Ontario Crown Use Policy Atlas. That was a bit of a mouthful, uh, but it's a resource put out by the Ontario government that's basically Google Maps, but more specifically it shows you parks and uh, crown land, conservation reserves, um, and labels them all out pretty well in different shades of green to uh, show you the different areas you can go. And uh, I believe it also gives you uh, resources for what you're allowed to do on those, uh, but always double and triple check. So I'll show you a bit of that website right now. Quick Google search for Ontario Crown Land Map uh, should show you the link at the top of your search. Again, it's called the Crown Land Use Policy Atlas, which is a bit of a mouthful. And right at the top there, it's going to show you the link for the map. And now uh, you're looking at the map. Uh, you scroll around like you typically would in any maps apps. Uh, the only thing you're going to want to know is that to zoom in or out, you have to use the little buttons in the upper left hand corner right here. Zoom in. And that's going to show you some of the smaller parks that don't show up when you're zoomed out. So the more you zoom in, the more it's going to show you exact borders of the parks. You can see uh, Bon Echo right there. Go up to Map Layers and then to Legend. It shows you all the different colors associated with parks, conservation reserves, and crown land, as well as a bunch of other stuff. But basically, uh, your darker shading of green is going to be your parks, conservation reserves, and crown land. For instance, here's the Cashew Lake Barrens, uh, which I just did a trip video on. And if you zoom in, it's going to show you all the lot lines laid out and uh, give you an idea of exactly where the borders of the park are. Uh, it's also going to show you trails that run through it. You can see this little green dotted line here that my cursor is following. Uh, and that's the Cooper's Falls Trail. Another example is an area I know pretty well, which is Three Mile Lake. And I know that uh, part of the lake is uh, private land, um, but most of it's surrounded by crown land. You can see the private land right here. And the rest of it's all crown land. So that's free camping. One of the things this app doesn't show you is access points. Uh, it's kind of on you to figure out how you're going to get there and what the parking situation is like. And that's where research comes in. Overall, I found it to be a great tool for finding cool camping spots, though. And I'd highly recommend using it, checking it out at least. The next app I like to use is All Trails. And that's a great app. Works anywhere in the world. I've used it in Arizona and Hawaii all over the place to uh, find cool hiking trails. A lot of times that'll show you where the camping sites are, but it's great. It has user reviews and pictures and everything of the trails, elevation changes and all that kind of stuff. All Trails is a great app. It works with both Android and iPhones. When you first open up the app, it's going to show you trails nearby. You can also search for specific locations that you may be planning a trip to. The map feature in the upper right hand corner just lets you kind of browse around and shows you where the trailheads are. If you see a uh, number on the trailhead location that probably means that there's multiple trails in close vicinity or they use the same trailhead. The map also lays out the boundaries of parks pretty well but it doesn't show you crown land. I know I've browsed around for that and you can't specifically see the borders of crown land. So if we select a specific trail, it's going to bring up the name of the trail and all the info, the difficulty level, user ratings and everything. It's also going to show you uh, the outline of the trail on the map. Here's all the info. Length, elevation change, what type of trail it is, and what its uses are. You can also bring up pictures that other users have submitted. Unfortunately, this one only has one picture. 
And if you scroll down, you can read user reviews on the trail. And here's where you can see the elevation changes of the trail as a graph. You can also browse by activity, whether it be hiking, mountain biking, or camping, bird watching, etc., etc., which is kind of a great feature if you're looking for something specific. So that's the app. Uh, great app. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you don't already have it on your phone. The next thing I like to use is a bit old school, but works like a charm, and that's Maps. Now, I have a couple maps that I use to show you. Uh, as an example, I really like the Jeff's maps personally, but it seems you can't find them anymore, so do what you got to do. Uh, there's plenty of companies out there putting out maps. Uh, the Adventure Maps are great. Use them all the time. Um, and I just collect those at camping stores and various places I go. I just browse what kind of maps they have, and it seems everybody carries a bit different selection depending on the area you're in. But definitely a great resource and a great tool for safety if you're going out on longer trips is to bring a map. Maps can show you the locations of private and crown land as well as things you'll encounter along your way, which is useful when trying to plan a trip. They can also show you access points, lengths of portages, and just the overall route, as well as hiking trails. But probably most importantly, it's going to show you what's allowed in each individual park and whether it's free or not. Another great resource is guidebooks. I love the Kevin Callan books. Uh, I have a few of them in my collection. I actually have a signed one that I found at uh, the ReStore for a dollar, I think. That was a cool find, signed by Kevin Callan himself. He does a good job of talking about the trip, kind of a little story, uh, as well as some guidelines and tips and stuff like that on the routes. Uh, and they're not too drawn out. I've read guidebooks where it's just a long, drawn out story, basically, that you don't care about half the things they're saying. And he just keeps it simplified enough that it's interesting, but not so much that you're bored and you don't end up reading through the entire book and it just sits on your shelf and does nothing. I always recommend it to people that are starting out. It gives you a good idea of different routes you can do. Uh, and he lays out a lot of times the access points, like the uh, if it's a fly-in situation or if it's just a point-to-point -point where you can park and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think he always recommends contacting the park because some of his books are a bit outdated. So it's always good to call ahead and find out what the situation is or just do your own research. Sometimes the situation changes from the time it was posted online, uh, whatever you're reading. Sometimes owners in the parking area get a little annoyed with adventurers being disrespectful. So always do your research and try to find the most up-to-date information on the trip you're going on to so that when you come back to your car, it's still there because I've heard of that. <laughs> Final thing I like to use is just Google Maps. Um, it's great, it'll show you the train and the elevation changes because that's a lot of times where you find interesting spots. You're gonna find the waterfalls, you're gonna find cool lookouts, and that if you have big elevation changes. But you have to like to hike because those spots are gonna be a little bit harder to get to. So make sure you're in shape. Hope this helps you guys out. Now get out there for some adventures of your own. They're waiting for you.